Well, these days, Matthew and Gunnar Nelson are paying tribute to their legendary dad, Ricky Nelson, uh, singing some of his greatest hits, like this one. I'm a traveling man, made a lot of stops all over the world, and in every port I own the heart of at least one lovely girl. Icon. This week, the Nelson brothers bring their show to the Metro performing in St. Michael Thursday night. Please welcome Matthew and Gunnar Nelson to the show. Hi, guys. Hey, hey there. Jason. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank, thank you for being here. And I got to ask, you know, we've interviewed over the years a lot of, a lot of um, uh, kids, uh, siblings of famous folks. And I'm always curious, when did you realize that your dad, and I love, this word is overused, but it's fitting for your father. Uh, when did you realize your father was iconic? I think we probably have different stories. I think Gunners would have to be, was it when uh, there was a parent teacher day? There was a parent teacher day and for the first time our, our teachers started putting on their makeup before uh, our dad showed up. <laughs> yeah, that was that, that, was that one. Uh, for me, I think uh, I was, I was, I think three years old and we went on a vacation. Uh, fortunately for us, it, it was in Hawaii and uh, there was a, a concert or something. I just remember a big velvet booth, a lot of people and there was uh, a band on stage and some guy was doing great and playing songs everybody was screaming and clapping and i realized it was our dad so that would that did it for me i just it's unbelievable and what is it like fast forwarding to the present guys what is it like on an emotional level uh to be performing your dad's music it, it has to be exceptional on so many levels well, it's a labor of love. Our dad was our best friend. He was such a cool guy. If you grew up with the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet and you wondered what he was like when the cameras got shut down, the lights got turned off at the end of the day, he was even cooler and sweeter and funnier. He was totally down to earth, blissfully unaware of how freakishly good looking he was. <laughs> and I think, I think because of, of his looks and also the unfair advantage of being on the television show, he got written off at the time by a lot of critics unfairly because uh, as John Fogarty said when he inducted our dad into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, for a lot of critics to admit that Ricky Nelson actually had the talent he had would be like having to admit that the prom queen had a brain. Uh, oh, I, lo I love that, but not for, I love it just because it's, yeah, it's unfortunately a good pair. He was super talented, man. He had a choice between being a, a very talented actor, of course he did Rio Bravo with John Wayne and was on 435 episodes of The, the Family Show, but he chose to, to do rock and roll. That was really, Ricky Nelson was a, a great rock and roller who happened to be a really talented actor and not the other way around. Did, and up until the day he died, he was doing 300 dates a year on the road. Did he realize the, the, the pigeonholing or, you know, Hollywood and the music industry loves to put folks into boxes. Did he oh, realize yeah. it and did it bother him? Well, I think what he, of course he realized it because he couldn't go anywhere without that really being a part of, I mean, if you think about it, it was almost like an albatross around his neck, but yeah. he turned it around. He got booed off the stage at a concert in New York when he was playing with his country rock band, the Stone Canyon Band, in the early 70s and wrote a song about it called Garden Party. He uh, had his emotional break and had to draw a line in the sand and let everybody know that if they couldn't deal with him getting older, because at this point he had a multiple decade career, that that was their problem. You know, and uh, I think that, that it really redefined in people's minds who he was and that he really actually had a whole lot to say. This isn't any normal show. You guys weave a lot of elements into this. Uh, what, what, what can folks expect to, at the show? Well, it's different than a normal concert. I, I, I describe it as a high energy rock concert meets an Annie biography episode because we bring a video element to it. Our, our family had the greatest home movies in the world with those 435 episodes of Ozzy and Harriet. We cut to and from that. We have his luminary friends talking about them or about him as well, like uh, Paul McCartney and Chris Christopherson, John Fogarty, Chris Isaac, and, and all that for the social proof. But the most important thing is the two of us are approaching these songs with the same kind of fire and energy that our dad did. When rock and roll was brand new, there were no, no rules, and they, they were a bunch of kids shooting from the hip on the West Coast with really no template to go by, and they made such incredible music. I mean, Trapped Little Man, Hello Mary Lou, Poor Little Fool, Lonesome Town, Believe What You Say, I Got a Feeling, Teenage Idol, oh. uh, Garden Party, as Matthew mentioned. Never anyone wants to play either. It just goes on and on. But I think the through line, too, is the fact that it's his sons that knew him and loved him that already we've already had our own career. We've already proven ourselves, and that's why we can do it now, and it means something completely different. It's visiting with our, with our father, reconnecting with him. You know, for us, 
We loved him dearly, still do miss him every day. And that's what you get on the stage. It's real for us. And we're connected to our entire uh, lineage, our whole family and, going back, you know, a whole century. And, and we only have about 30 seconds. And my favorite little fun fact about you guys, other than the, just the rich history, Mama Cass was your babysitter. I mean, it oh, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. You know, that was just our normal, man. That's, <laughs> that was normal to us. She was just a really cool chick who happened to look out for us, you know? And you know, our grandfather, Ozzy, was a big band leader and suggested the song Dream a Little Dream of Me as her, her breakout single as a solo artist. It all goes kind of back, everybody's connected and pretty fun uh, now. And now if you're a TV fan, our uncle, Mark Harmon's doing pretty well on NCIS. That's our mom's brother. As we said, we had a totally normal childhood. <laughs> to so. Totally normal, totally, <laughs> totally normal. Totally normal. Guys, I can't wait for this show and uh, thanks for bringing it here and thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jason. Love to, to everybody out there. Thanks for support. Thank you. Ricky Nelson remembered is happening Thursday night at the Summerfield Amphitheater in St. Michael. Go to SummerfieldLive.com for more information. That is going to be a show. That's fantastic. We're going to take a break. The Laundry Guy's here. I have, we have stains. I have a stain. I'm glad he's here. And you will be too when we come back. Back in a moment. <laughs>